It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to this service in which we celebrate the liberation of Guernsey on Wednesday the 9th of May 1945, 75 years ago. This anniversary is very significant. Many plans had been made for how we would mark the day, but as you know only too well, the arrival of the COVID-19 virus has changed almost every aspect of our lives. The town church features in the backdrop to this service, but as our churches are closed for public worship, we cannot be inside the church as we would have hoped and wished. Nevertheless, and however different today's commemoration is to what so many have planned, we are recalling that remarkable and glorious day when the British troops came ashore in St Peterport, very close to where I am standing, bringing to an end the five long years of occupation of Guernsey by German troops and giving hope of an end to the hardship which the people of Guernsey had suffered. That day also dawned with the hope of a return to the island of those who had spent the years of occupation in the United Kingdom, in Bibrac or elsewhere. Today is a day of thanksgiving for our continuing freedom and self-determination as a Crown dependency. In that thanksgiving, we include also our debt of thanks to those who are sustaining and supporting this island during the crisis, which we, like so many around the world, are facing. We think especially of those who are working in the health services, those who are working to sustain the economic life of our island, and those who are keeping us safe. On this Liberation Day, we remember the deportation of large numbers of local residents, including many who were not born in Guernsey, who had faced uncertain and dangerous times as prisoners in Germany. We include amongst them the three Jewish women who were sent to Laval, from where they were transported with others 
to Auschwitz-Birkenau. We give thanks for those who have built links of reconciliation between former enemies. And we give thanks for the life that springs from our years of reconciliation and friendship with the people of Biberach. We offer our greetings to them in our sadness that they are not able to travel to Guernsey, nor we to Biberach, because of the global pandemic. This 75th anniversary is also for many people a day in which we recall painful and vivid memories of loss and separation, of hardship and deprivation, of fear and anxiety. We are reminded that peace is both precious and fragile, that we depend on each other for our life, our health and our prosperity, and that too many people in our world do not know the peace and the safety in which we are privileged to live. And so conscious of the sins and failings of humanity and our own sins and failings, we turn to the living God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit.
we confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness and its greed, all that diminishes the common humanity which we share. We confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish the peace and security which God wills for all his people. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Here is a reading from the Old Testament. God blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. 
When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it, and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 8 to 13. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully. Even as I have been fully known, and now faith Hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love.
May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Guernsey is festooned with a huge amount of bunting, and there are so many Guernsey and Union flags all around the island. This suggests that even though the way in which we are celebrating Liberation Day is far from what we'd planned or expected, just a few months ago, this 75th anniversary of Guernsey's liberation after years of occupation by the Nazi regime in Germany during the Second World War is a hugely significant day in the life of this island. It is so important that we remember the liberation of Guernsey and celebrate this anniversary. The Channel Islands were the only part of the British Isles to be occupied during the war, which means that the war was experienced here and in the other islands in ways that many outside the islands can scarcely begin to understand. Those who stayed in Guernsey during the occupation suffered particular hardships. But the war years were equally difficult for those who were sent to the internment camps in Biberac. Many were evacuated to the United Kingdom during the Second World War. Some had a good experience and still maintain links with those with whom they stayed. But others had a more difficult time away from family and friends. They were tolerated rather than loved and cared for. But for all those not in Germany during the occupation, Liberation Day signalled the possibility of return. Those years of occupation and the consequences for so many people have left an indelible remark on all those affected. Today we honour all those men and women of Guernsey who have personal memories of May 1945. And we remember parents and grandparents, family members and friends, for whom the ninth day of May in 1945 was a day of such profound significance. Important as liberation was for all Guernsey people, it was the beginning of a long process of recovery and reconstruction, of discovery to use words that are very much in our minds, of a new normal. For those returning to Guernsey, family relationships had to be rebuilt. That was not always easy. I remember a conversation a few years ago with a family whose mother left Guernsey in 1940 as a child and returned as a young adult. And the difficulty she had with reconnecting with her family in Guernsey. Guernsey is festooned with flags and bunting. But as we walk around the island, we are aware of other decorations, the rainbows in the windows and decorating our houses. They cheer us up and they make us smile and they are a sign of hope. Sir Richard Collis, our bailiff, read from the book Genesis, the first book of the Old Testament in the Bible, which uses powerful stories and images to explain the nature of humanity and our relationship with God. The story of Noah, the righteous man who survived the great flood, ends with the words that Sir Richard read. God speaks of the rainbow as a promise, a sign of hope for humanity and of all creation that would never again that there would never again be such a catastrophic flood the beauty of the rainbow is embraced by almost all cultures it doesn't last long but it signals the end to a storm as the sun shines through the rain it is a sign of hope the trend of decorating our homes with rainbows may have started in Italy, but it has been embraced around the world as we face together the global crisis caused by the COVID-19 epidemic. 
during the occupation of Guernsey, many were exiled from their homes and from this island. In ways that we could not have anticipated, we approach this Liberation Day from our experience of exile, uprooted as we are from so much of life that is so familiar, unable to gather for worship or family celebrations, for schools and recreation, and learning new ways of working and relating. Most poignantly, we cannot attend the funerals of those we know and love. As we seek to rebuild our relationships and rebuild our economy, perhaps we have a new appreciation of the struggles and challenges facing the people of Guernsey in 1945 and their remarkable resilience to rebuild this island and make it the place we value and love. They are our inspiration in the crisis and challenge we face together and as we discover how much we need each other. Hundreds of years ago, Europe was devastated by the plague. It was a terrible time in which many people died. A woman called Julian lived in Norwich in East Anglia in the late 1300s. Out of her physical pain and illness, Julian experienced visions of God and found the compassion for which she prayed. She realises her need to be joyful in all circumstances, however adverse, and for no particular reason except this, that all things will ultimately be put right by Jesus. The words she heard are powerful. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. She is in no doubt that before ever he made us, God loved us, and his love has never slackened, nor ever shall. This is our hope, as it was for the people of Guernsey 75 years ago, just as they had to refashion this island and discover the new normal for them. So we will need to work together to refashion Guernsey as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. We have the promise that all shall be well, and we can make it so, even if it is not what we might have expected. Sir Ian Corder, our Lieutenant Governor, read from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. St Paul is writing to a fractious and divided community in the city of Corinth. He is in no doubt about the complexity of life and the fact that we cannot always see the big picture. Now we see in a mirror, dimly. As in 1945, it won't be easy, but the way forward is clear. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. As we look back, and as we give thanks for the liberation of Guernsey in May 1945, we look forward to our liberation from the crisis we are facing with faith and hope and knowing that we will be sustained both by the love we have received and the love we will show to each other in the days ahead. We'll never walk alone.
for the liberation of this island from enemy occupation 75 years ago today, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For the fortitude and resilience of those who remained here throughout the occupation, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For those who were evacuated or deported from Guernsey and returned safely to their homes and families, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For those who fought long and hard and who worked to bring about the liberation which we celebrate today, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For the bonds of friendship which have been forged over the years, overcoming old hostilities, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For the freedom we enjoy in this bailiwick to order our affairs and to live in liberty and in peace, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For those who are working in this current pandemic to ensure the safety and prosperity of this island, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For those who are working in our health and care services in our response to COVID-19 and to ensure the physical and mental health of our people, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. For Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and the Royal Family, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Eternal God, the refuge and help of all your people, we give you thanks for all that you have given us, for all that you have done for us, for all that you are to us. In our weakness, you are strength. In our darkness, you are light. In our sorrow, you are comfort and peace. For all your goodness, we give you thanks. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety, for all who are affected by COVID-19, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are guiding our bailiwick at this time and shaping the policies that protect and guide our common life, that they may make wise decisions. For our most gracious Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, for the Lieutenant Governor, the Bailiff, the Royal Court, the States of Deliberation, and all in authority, that they make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, for others who work in health and social care, and for medical researchers, that through their skill and care and insight, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our homes and families, for our schools and young people, and for all in any need or distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this bailiwick, that our island may be a place of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people of goodwill throughout the world, who long for peace and justice, and for an end to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the forces of the Crown, especially those on active service, that they may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, 
our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We have given thanks for the liberation of Guernsey 75 years ago in 1945. Let us now make a commitment to be agents of peace and reconciliation in the world in whatever ways lie open to us. And if you have the text of the prayer, please join in from your homes or wherever you are today. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humanity in the cause of peace, freedom and reconciliation, to relieve the plight of the poor, to care for the lonely 
and friendless. To model the highest standards of probity and integrity in all that we do. And to work for the furtherance of your kingdom on earth. Give us the courage and determination to work for the fulfilment of this pledge. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for God's blessing on this bailiwick and upon each one of us. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.